All right, fellas, I got a scary one tonight here. I have to make one of these coils out of stainless steel. Never done this before with stainless steel. It's a finicky metal. This is stainless steel with molybdenum. That basically helps inhibit corrosion further. Um, and it's also supposed to help maintain strength during high temperatures. So this ought to be the perfect alloy for the job here. This is a 25 foot coil. And we're gonna be making this coil here. First thing we're gonna do is flare the ends, and fill it with water. Just while we're at it, never use a pipe cutter on stainless steel tubing. You always wanna cut it with a cutoff wheel or a hacksaw, anything other than that, because a, a pipe cutter will basically work hard in the metal and the flaring process won't go as smoothly, especially if you're double flaring. But, um, this is the only way I can get stainless steel tubing to flare. These little side pins. <sighs> Just don't cut it. guys wish me luck I've got it on a mandrel here with a um, stack of washers and a bolt we're gonna start the bend along the side of that bolt not expect this to be easy very worried I could damage the tube here and that's just not an option right now I'm gonna take it easy on it best that I can Oh man, it's going really well so far. They're somewhat spread out. I'm gonna do this in the fan method this time. See how it goes. Proceed. I need to get my arm over here. It seems to work very well like this. I risk damaging this coil at this point in the process. This is where you really gotta have your technique down. I've attempted to bust out the freaking bender. Here is the coolest part about this particular method when it comes to being done. The water burst out of there. We were definitely at very high pressure. Now we gotta braise it all together. Just so it's solid and just not a floppy mess. Okay, I'm going to use some Stay Seal 5 on this particular braze joint. I've never done this, it's just stainless steel. Okay, now I gotta do one more on the front of the unit here just to kind of stiffen the rod. Okay, fellas, so this is what we ended up with. <clears throat> We're good to go. There's a better look at it. So, okay now just for a little bit of extra added input for 
any of you guys who are watching this who are very serious about making some coils, a lot of people are always asking me why I don't use salt. The problem with salt is that when you bend these tight bends, like on this inner coil, you turn the salt into a pill. Look at um, some videos on how pills are manufactured and you'll kind of get an idea of what's happening. This outer coil, I, there's some certain formula about these, but I don't even think you need to have anything in this outer coil. I only think the water matters, or the salt even, for these smaller tight bends on the inside here. I think a diameter this big, it, you don't even need anything. But for me, using water is just so convenient because anyone who's ever done an extensive amount of coils knows I've lost entire coils because of salt, because I couldn't get the salt out of it when I was done. It took me nine hours one day to remove salt from this thing. This little piece of test device here was a gasification device with a superheated steam coil that would inject superheated steam into the gasification process. Can you see the little steam injectors there? It was a quadrilateral steam injector set up there. And uh, I've used salt to bend this coil and could not get the salt out. I put it in pots of boiling water several different times. I heated it up, I sprayed compressed air, compressed water, any everything you could think of. And for the life of me, I could not get the salt out of this thing. Eventually, after hours and hours and hours, I finally got a slimy brine sludge to come out of the coil. It had turned, uh, all the boiling and stuff had turned it into a briny sludge. And it was the weirdest thing i ever seen. Some of it was clear, but yet very gooey. I've never seen salt look like that before. So, if you want my advice, never use salt. I've never used high quality sand, so I can't speak for the sand people. However, I can say that the water works great. You have to be careful on really tight bends, but uh, other than that, you'll be good to go. If this thing leaks even the slightest bit, these ends, let's see what we got here. This is how I cap these off. If this leaks even one drop of water, you will get a kink in the tube. So you've gotta make sure that these I'm almost suggesting using double flares because I did get a little bit of a leak and as a result I got a little bit of a kink right there but it's not enough to inhibit flow at all as you can see but it did start to get a little funny looking there on me but um, that's because one simple little drop of water come out of this so be on the lookout for that this process works great if it doesn't leak and it's sometimes impossible to hold more than 500 PSI's with these flare fittings, I swear. And uh, that's all I got, fellas. I'm gonna shut up. Just thought I'd show you the process of bending stainless steel coils or stainless steel tubing into coils.